Gower. For all its beauty, charm, views to blow your mind, it goes without saying it's unique. Much like many parts of Britain's coastline, it comes with its own history. Gower has many mysteries, stories, and sadly tragedies not to be forgotten. I'm here at Rossilli to show you one of Gower's most unique aspects, and this is Worm's Head. It seems like a strange name, but it was actually named by Vikings. When the Vikings first saw Worm's Head, they thought it was a sleeping dragon. They believed that the blowhole that could be seen on rough days was the dragon breathing, and the word Worm, spelt W-O-R-M-E, is Viking for dragon, so they called it the Dragon's Head. There have been many shipwrecks on Gower, this anchor is the only remains of the shipwreck of the Samuel that sank here in 1884. You can find it on the causeway between Rossilli and Worm's Head. As soon as the causeway closes, the currents here are very strong. It becomes like a raging torrent and will sweep you off your feet, even when the water is still shallow. Many people have attempted to cross the causeway as it's flooding and have drowned. For your safety, the times the causeway is open are displayed daily at the Coast Guard station located at the head of Rossilli. Local newspapers were first published in 1804, and before that, no one was keeping an accurate record of shipwrecks on Gower, so it is likely there have been hundreds, if not more, that have been forgotten in time. One of Gower's best-known shipwrecks, the Helvetia, lies here at Rossilli. It was a Norwegian cargo ship carrying a cargo of timber to Swansea. On its journey in November 1887, a sudden change of wind direction drove the ship onto the beach. Everything that was salvageable was taken, including 500 tonnes of cargo. All that was left is this wreckage. There was a small steamer ship called the Cambria. This ship was from Planethlia and was used to salvage parts of the Helvetia. 
The Cambria beached next to the Helvetia in January 1888. As the tide came in, a gale blew up, causing the Cambria to turn. The crew dropped their anchor offshore and used it to pull the boat free. Although the ship managed to refloat, the anchor was lost in the process. A couple of months later, the ship's master, John Hopkins, wanted to recover the lost anchor using a rowing boat. Mr Hopkins and six other men tried to bring the anchor back on the boat. However, the weight of the anchor along with the men was too much. In desperation, the crew dropped their anchor overboard and the boat capsized, with all crew members being thrown into the sea. They were all swept away by the strong currents. Captain John Hopkins and four other crew members died. It's hard to believe that five people actually drowned trying to retrieve an anchor just like this one. There was a village from the 12th century at Frasili which is now buried. This village had a cemetery that is now on the cliff edge. With continuing erosion and landslides, human bones from the cemetery are being exposed and ending up on the beach. It's important to remember that these people had real lives, just like you and I, but their now was in the 12th century. The Gower Peninsula was the first place in Britain to be designated an area of outstanding natural beauty, and you can see why. I'm sitting on remains of a World War II radar station at Rossilli. It was blown up after the war to stop technology falling into the wrong hands. The views here have been so profound, it has influenced people throughout millennia. And within a few hundred yards of this radar station, there are Kens, which are ancient burial grounds. And what a place to be buried. <laughs> 